I admit it, I love revolvers. Revolvers are just kind of magical. Uh, Semi-automatics are fine, but revolvers have a soul to them. And so I've got a, a variety of revolvers here, just some of my collection. You've got the 357 Magnum, a Smith & Wesson, a classic Model 19. You've got the Public Defender here, if you wanted a shotgun in your pocket. We have the gigantic Raging Judge. And then we have a tiny little revolver, the Black Widow from North American Arms. And they all have their uses, but what if you actually wanted a real little gun? I mean, the, the North American Mini Revolver is small, right? But what if we wanted someone's really, really tiny? Well, hidden beneath it, that's what I'm talking about. The North American Arms 22LR Mini Revolver. This is just about the smallest revolver there is. Now, I gotta say, <laughs> I love this thing. It just puts a smile on my face whenever I see it. If I, if I open up the gun safe and I see that thing sitting there, it just makes me smile. It is so neat. Obviously, I have a variety of revolvers here, so I have uh, different ones for different purposes, but this thing just appeals to me because it is so tiny, it fulfills a unique role, and it is such a nicely made product. It is, it is a testament to precision engineering and craftsmanship. It's a great conversation starter. I cannot pull this thing out at the range without people wanting to see it, ask more about it, wanting to try it themselves. Show it to Kirsten Joy Weiss. She immediately wanted to try to do trick shots from it. It just is a, a really fun device. Now, that said, this is not a toy. This is a legitimate firearm. This is capable of deadly force. You do have to pass a NICS check to be able to get this. You have to fill out the form. You have to go through an FFL. Not a toy. It's a real firearm. The, the appeal to this as a firearm is that it can go places where nothing else can. This you can fit in the fifth pocket of your jeans. This is something that you could put it in a, inside the waistband holster and have no idea it's even there. I've got an inside the waistband holster that I put this into that I can clip onto the top of my boot. It becomes a boot gun. Here's another way you can carry it. This is just a, this makes it a basically a piece of jewelry or a, a fashion accessory. It snaps right into this belt buckle holster. So you can just be wearing this on your belt. Another way that I carry this sometimes, I have a Kydex neck holster. So here's something that you can just slip it around your neck, drop it down your shirt, it totally disappears. Nobody has any idea it's there. And this is a way you can carry a backup gun. You'd still wanna have your, your main weapon be on your hip or in your pocket or whatever, if your pocket carry. But for a backup, it's something where, you know, if you're in a situation where you needed to use it, nobody would expect it. Nobody would expect you to have a pistol here. And yet, there it is. It's invisible, it disappears. This particular revolver is the 22 LR version. This is not the 22 Magnum. Uh, we're just, some people out when they hear that, they think that, you know, of course you got to get the 22 Magnum. 22 Magnum is more powerful, but it's also a lot bigger. I wanted the smallest revolver I could get. The smallest practical revolver. They do technically make one that is a third of an inch shorter, and it only shoots 22 shorts. To me, that extra third of an inch and having the flexibility of 22 LR was well worth it. Now, as a pistol, as a uh, defensive weapon, there's a lot of debate about that on the internet. You got guys saying that, oh, absolutely, you know, any gun is better than no gun. This is a gun you can always have with you. It's totally true. I absolutely believe that. Uh, others will say that, you know, you want to file off the front sight completely because if somebody finds out that you shot them with this, likely going to shove it up your rump and it will hurt less on you if, if you file the sight off. I've heard that. There may be some truth to that. I don't know. Uh, what I do know is it is not comparable to a full-size weapon. You know, the, the Raging Judge here puts out close to 2,000 foot-pounds of energy. The little 22 lr pistol puts out closer to about 50 to 60 foot-pounds. So it's not in the same class as some other pistols you could carry. Obviously, you have to be aware of that. You have to know that. You have to understand what you're getting. And don't think it's something that it isn't in both ways. I don't want people thinking that this is more powerful than it actually is and that this is all the gun you need because I would never recommend this to be the only pistol that you carry. That's great backup. But for your primary pistol, uh, only in rare
rare circumstances when you can't carry something better. On the other hand, uh, I don't think it's fair that people think that this is incapable of doing any damage whatsoever because as I'll show you in the ammo test section of the video here, this is surprisingly powerful and it really can do some damage. It could be a man stopper in the right scenarios and circumstances. So it's an interesting pistol. It's not a very powerful pistol, but it may be powerful enough to do the job you need. I've read stories on the internet of people saying they couldn't hit the broadside of a barn at five yards or three yards with this. And I gotta say, if you don't use proper technique, yeah, it's not easy to hit. But if you use proper technique and you use the sights as they're meant to be used, this pistol is capable of plenty adequate accuracy. So what do I mean by using the sights? First of all, the problem is there's no rear sight. There's only a front sight. And so aiming it left to right is not so easy. But when you cock the hammer, it moves down low enough that you now have the notch where the hammer used to be. Line that up, use that as your back sight, line that up with the front sight, and you can shoot straight on. Then it becomes a question of how far do you set the post into the notch in order to aim straight? Well, I practiced and found the ideal position for me, and I found that I could deliver a two inch group at five yards, that's 15 feet. And that's as far as I would think I would ever be trying to use this pistol in a defensive engagement. And I gotta say, being able to hit within an inch of where I'm aiming, you know, at the center point, a two inch group gives me about one inch off of the aim, point of aim in every direction. I think that's plenty fine. So yeah, with the right ammo and with proper aim, you can actually deliver a man stopping hit with this. So does that make this a practical choice? Should this be your one and only carry weapon? Uh, I don't think so for a number of reasons. I don't wanna get NAA fans mad at me. I want you to understand where I'm coming from with this. If you only had $200 to spend on a pistol, is this where you should spend it to, to get a pistol to defend your life? I think that's probably not the wisest choice. I'll show you why. Let me show you something else I got. This is a Taurus TCP, a 380 ACP. This cost me 199. This off buds, I did the make offer, I got it for 195. So they cost about exactly the same. Size wise, yeah, this is bigger, but you know, it's not that much bigger. It's a little bit longer, just a little bit longer, and it's a lot taller. But when you get to terms of practicality, when you get terms to shootability, this is much easier to aim. This is very challenging to aim accurately. It can be done, but it's a lot more work. That's all I'm saying. Keep in mind the work involved. You've got one finger to hold on to this. You have to cock it, aim it. Normally you wanna hold it with both hands and, and get a second hand grip on here, just like you would use two hands here. It makes it easier, but still it's very challenging to aim and shoot this accurately as compared to how simple it is to aim and shoot a larger pistol. And this is not a larger pistol. This is the tiniest semi-automatic that I could find. Uh, there may be some a little bit smaller, but in general, this is about the tiniest semi-automatic. The trigger is a long, smooth draw. You've got uh, instant reloads possible. Reloading 22LR in the field is not easy, if, if practical at all. I mean, you gotta pull this out and you gotta half cock the hammer and roll the cylinder out. Then you poke the, sh the cartridges, you poke the shells out with this, then you reload. You have to put the cylinder back in, half cock the hammer and hope that you get the cylinder roughly centered and then put this back in and hope that it goes in. You're not gonna be doing combat reloads with a 22 LR mini revolver, but with this, it would be simple to do. And so you get more capacity here. You get six in the magazine plus one in the pipe. So seven rounds total versus five total. And each round of 380 is basically about three times the size of the 22 LR bullet and carrying three to four times as much kinetic energy as a 22 LR bullet. So the bullets are three to four times more devastating in terms of amount of damage done and you get more of them and it's easier to shoot them. And this is by no means a great choice for your only defensive weapon. This is, this is the bare minimum that I would consider for being adequately armed, but I'm just pointing it out because this was exactly the same price as this. So is this that practical of a choice? 
not really. It's not about practicality though. This is like, the way I look at this, it's like in vehicles, a uh, pickup truck or a hatchback is eminently practical. Uh, you can carry anything you need in it. A little hatchback gets great gas mileage. A pickup truck can go anywhere. This to me is more like in vehicles, like having a Harley. A Harley is a lifestyle statement. A Harley is just plain cool. A Harley is fun. The Harley in the garage is great, but if the Harley was your only vehicle, it makes grocery shopping tough. You know, it's uh, when it rains, it's a mess. You know, we, the people who are riding along in their little hatchback and they have their heater going and they got their windshield wipers, they're in a different world of comfort compared to the Harley rider. And for shootability and practicality, I think a little itty bitty semi-auto like this is probably a lot more practical choice. But that doesn't mean I don't want a Harley. And that doesn't mean I don't want the NAA Mini Revolver because I love this thing. I like it a lot. I'm just pointing out there is a world of practicality difference. So as a backup gun, as a game changer gun, this is great. As your primary defensive weapon, it wouldn't be my first choice. So that sums up my review. I love it. I think it's great. I don't think it's the easiest to shoot pistol in the world. I don't think it's the most practical defensive pistol in the world. But the fact that something, this little work of art, this little uh, piece of gun jewelry, this novelty, whatever else you want to call it, is also capable of delivering over 11 inches of penetration shot after shot after shot after shot after shot. That's fantastic. Highly recommended. Love it. Make up your own decision. But, uh, you know, use the pistol for what it's designed for. Keep it in context of what it really is, and hopefully you'll be really happy with it too. Thanks for watching, and hit subscribe, and you'll be notified when new videos are posted.